Hello YouTube, this is Bowtied Media, and today I have been waiting, anticipating, it is finally here, Flume Palaces. I was gonna wear an orange bow tie for the uh, Mart, but uh, of all my bow ties, I don't have a single orange one, so. <laughs> So that's, uh, we're going with this this color, but uh, super, super excited. I've been following along with these singles so far and have been loving them. I did reactions to all of them, but say nothing because I don't know why. I just was caught off guard by say nothing. Didn't do a video for it, but uh, oh, okay. I, uh, I guess this is what? This is technically Flume's third album after Flume Skin and then now Palaces. Um, Flume was a little more on the experimental side of stuff as Flume normally is, but in terms of his whole thing, uh, Skin was a little bit more dark, brooding, a little bit more, uh, a little more deeper, a little more uh, gritty, uh, but still his kind of classic style. And uh, Palaces is, uh, I guess, based off of some birds. Um, so we will see <laughs> how it goes. Uh, but the way this is going to work is I'm going to listen to every single song on the album from top to bottom, uh, and uh, we're going to react to them. I'll give my my thoughts at the end of each track. Uh, so without any further ado, let's just hop into it. Uh, track number one, Highest Building featuring uh, Aklau. I'm gonna, probably gonna butcher a lot of the sayings here, but uh, here we go. This is uh, the first track off of Palace's Highest Building. Okay, Flume is coming out of the gates with Highest Building. Um, yeah, uh, so far, first track is uh, is like a, a song song. And uh, what I mean by that is he started, what, Flume with Sinatra and then Skin with Helix. And uh, they were kind of building atmospheric tracks that were establishing the... Uh, yeah, the tone and pace of the whole project to come. Uh, and they, it's not like they weren't individual songs, but they were, they weren't singles. Like they were, they were more, uh, setting up the rest of the album to succeed. Uh, and so there's great songs individually, but, uh, this one felt like it wasn't, it wasn't a, a builder. It wasn't an intro track. It didn't feel like, a, an interlude of sorts, um, which isn't a bad thing. It's just an observation I am, uh, I'm giving here. Uh, fun, fun song, uh, fun song. I don't know if it's, uh, it, it has the immediate, uh, hook that, uh, other tracks have had for me so far, like Say Nothing or Escape, um, even Palaces, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's still a great flume track, uh, it, it's one that sounds, it sounds so flumey, if that makes sense, it's like, there's some artists where obviously they have a very unique style, but there are so there are certain songs in certain artists' discography that's like, that is the most like blank sounding blank. It's the most flume sounding flume. It's the most disclosure sounding disclosure. The most um, like, I don't know what, what else there is in sounding of, you know what I mean? Uh, so it just, it sounds so much like a flume track, which is, which is great. And so I'm excited to see uh, where the rest of this uh, album is going to go from this point. But uh, we're going to move along to Say Nothing, uh, and this will be kind of a weird one because uh, this one's already come out, it's been out for a little while. Uh, I will play it and we will listen to it uh, for your sake if you have not heard it before or you want to listen along. Uh, but this is the only video, the only part of the video that you will not be, not see me doing a first reaction, a first listen to. Um, just because I'll, I'll talk about the other ones when we get to those, but um, this will not be my first uh, reaction, my first listen through Say Nothing. So you'll see me uh, enjoy this track quite a bit uh, because I do, and then we'll talk about it at the end. So here is Say Nothing featuring May A. Okay, say nothing. Um, uh, this might be a hot take for the album. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, of the single, I guess, f six songs at this point we've heard. Um, I love it. I am a huge fan of Say Nothing. It is very commercial. It is very poppy. It is like pretty much an electro pop track through and through. Uh, but something about it is just, it hooked me right away and it has not let loose since, uh, since it's come out. Um, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what it is about that track in particular that, uh, I enjoy so much about it. It feels, um, like I was talking about a highest building where it felt like a very, very flume track. This didn't feel like a very 
flume track. Like obviously, again, it is, but I'm using it as a descriptor of like, it's not super wonky, it's not super out there, it's not super experimental, it's pretty, um, it's pretty radio friendly, pretty kind of basic, but something about it has clicked with me in a big way. And so it's one of my favorites. And my guess is across the whole album, it might be one of the least favorites of people's just because uh, more often than not on these more kind of ex with artists like this uh, of a flume that are a little more experimental, people tend to not like the more commercial friendly songs. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Say Nothing, but uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll move on to uh, DHLC. Don't know what that stands for, but uh, here we go. Now that feels like old flume. That really feels a lot like old flume. Uh, so that's just, yeah, it comes at you hard and fast and is out there and <laughs> that just sounds, uh, that, that's a fun track. Um, yeah, DHLC, it's uh, the shortest of the whole album by four seconds um, to uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> Wait, that's okay. That'll be interesting when we get to that point. Um, shortest, but uh, it, it's it's not an interlude. Uh, it is quick like an interlude would be uh, to some extent, but it is, uh, yeah, it comes at you, slaps you across the face, and then you, you keep going, you keep moving. Um, so it's it's... Yeah, it's that's uh that's uh it's quite a fun track. It really reminds me of kind of old school flume, um, with a little more energy, a little more higher pace, a little more uh, a little higher tempo uh, than I would I would say uh, compared to older flume, but still very much an old flume sound. So. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna move into Escape, and here's how this is gonna go. I already did an initial react to it, so rather than you watching me listen through it another time, uh, we're gonna cut to the video of me listening it to it for the first time. So, uh, random cut right here. Intense. Uh, escape, wow, okay. Um, wow, what do I have to say about this? Uh, I would say, okay, so if there's one complaint I hear from Flume, uh, or people talk about Flume, it's that it's too experimental. It, it's hard to listen to. It's a little too out there. It's too strange, too jittery, too glitchy. Uh, and I think this was Flume doing a really good job of kind of toning that down a little bit, not a lot, but just enough uh, that it's really enjoyable and really pleasing to hear. There's still that classic, like, all those N1 beats and um, pull-offs and, and everything just like, it just felt like you were getting hit from a million different directions and you didn't really know where the song was going. I, I tried to do like a little head bob to it, but I found that I was just way off and didn't understand where I was going. Um, but it, it's just a fun listen. Uh, it's it, it has that very much classic experimental sound, though, like kind of wonky future bass from uh, Flume. And so... It's, it's a clean production that is a little more, in, it's like right in between the stuff that's a little more commercial friendly versus his kind of really out there experimental sounds. Um, like if you think about Say Nothing versus, I want to say anything off of the high, this is flu mixtape, it feels like a good kind of in between of the two. Uh, and so far what I'm hearing from this album and the singles is it really is Flume bringing in a lot of his different sounds and production elements and styles and kind of meshing them into all one fully encapsulating flume sound a absolutely it is a bit of everything for everyone this album is so far and that's only three songs that i've heard i haven't even heard palaces yet which i believe is the will be the finale track of the album even on these three songs it feels like he's hit every kind of range of his production and he's hit everything in a high on a high note and just isn't hitting all the right chords, uh, and I'm I'm happy with what I'm hearing so far. And welcome back. I hope that transition wasn't awkward, but we are moving into the next track, track number five, I Can't Tell, featuring Laurel. Here we go. Yeah, that one that one's an interesting one. Uh, that one is a little a little stranger because Flume is letting um, Laurel kind of be the main part of the track. Uh, it's kind of just a, a back and forth, though, of um, there's really not a whole ton happening uh, in the verses. Normally, there's a little bit, a little more something, like with Say Nothing, there's just the... And then the little, like, the... You get, you get something, you get something more to the beat, and it was a little more uh, restrained, uh, restrained um, with the, the verse sections, and then going into the chorus, and then after the chorus, there was, like, an actual, like 
beat drop section. So it, it was very, I don't know, it, maybe it was a little more different style than it was used to. I, the formula was just mixed up a little bit, which is good because I, I'd like... I like a mix-up of the formula a little bit, uh, but it wasn't. It didn't grip me a ton. It didn't grip me a ton. I loved the drop sections, but uh, I felt like I was just waiting for them uh, when it came. I was just kind of like, okay, let's let's get to the drop, and I was just waiting for that for the most part. I wasn't enjoying the verse sections as much as I maybe would have liked to, but uh, yeah. I think that's where we're gonna we're gonna end that. So that one, as all songs do, will need some more time, multiple listens, before you really give it a uh, proper not score, but an, an idea of how you really feel for it. But uh, up next, our I believe second longest song of the album. This is "Get You." Okay, another interesting cut. Uh, that one felt like it was straight off of the, uh, Hi, This Is Flume mixtape. Um, that it just, yeah, it felt like it was pretty much straight off that mixtape. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it just felt like a, a cut from that. Um, I wasn't so over the moon about the mixtape. It was a little too experimental for me. Uh, so this one I think was a little bit more reserved, I would say, than some of the other tracks off of that one. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. That one, like... I enjoy the track, but is it something I would really go back to a whole ton? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure at this point. Uh, there, I feel like there really wasn't a whole ton happening in that track, um, especially, and I wouldn't say especially, but like compared to some other tracks, um, definitely on this album. So I don't know. That one, uh, that one may need some more growing, some more getting used to. But uh, so far, that's the one I'm the least impressed with on this album. So. Uh, yeah, let's move along. This is uh, Jasper's song. That's going to rhyme. Uh, so uh, here we go. This is Jasper's song. Okay. Like a, a beautiful sounding piano and stuff. It's just, it feels a little out of place with the rest of the album. It feels like, or it is a middle point. Uh, so it is an interlude of sorts uh, without the, the, the short length being a factor. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have a ton to say about that one. Uh, I may have to look into more of the why that song exists. Um, why, what about it? Uh, just some stuff. Um, okay, wait, Genius has something really quick. So it says, um, this, this contributor, this may be real, this may be fake, who knows. Uh, it's a quote, apparently. Uh, that was originally a house track. It was a full house banger, but I then felt like it took away from the beauty of it, so I stripped it all the way back and just had this ambient piano piece. It really feels like a nice contrast to the record. There's a lot of hard stuff, so it's nice to have some really mellow, warm feelings. Okay, that's apparently a quote. I'm not sure. We're going to assume that Genius says that's correct, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree. It does feel like a nice change of pace, uh, just not one that I would... I think really go back to and visit individually, but that's okay. It's more of a piece for the album, not to be so listened to. So, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> here comes this, uh, this next track. This is going to be weird. Um, uh, only fans, uh, featuring, uh, Virgin Maria, Virgin Maria. Uh, here we go. This is literally just an ad for her OnlyFans. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would, I'm assuming she actually has an OnlyFans. Um, I looked her up on Spotify. She does make music, um, but I'm assuming she also does OnlyFans. Her music isn't super popular. Um, artwork is a little different too. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, yeah, she does say that's her job. So that's probably her job. Um, I, I would be very intrigued to see, uh, analytics if she gets a bump in, uh, subscriptions after this album's released. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that that's, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, song wise, uh, production wise, um, not a huge fan. Uh, personally, I know Flume's like disconnected, uh, offbeat drum, uh, hits are like, it's just a classic Flume sound. I'm not the hugest fan of it. Um, it just, I, I love to just like do this to songs, like just bop. And when they're, dun -dun 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 -dun, uh, when they're all over the place, I just, I don't know. It, it works well in some songs. Um, 
that one was just, uh, it, it was quick. Uh, it was weird, um, slightly off-putting. Um, I don't know, that one, I, that one is, is my least favorite of the project so far, for sure. But, uh, yeah, that one's, a, that one's a strange one for me. But, uh, we're gonna move into the next track, which is Hollow, featuring Emma Louise. And uh, I did a react to that uh, a little bit ago, actually, three days ago from this point. Uh, so here is the original react now. Okay, okay, okay. Flume Hollow featuring Emma Lewis, the fifth single to be released before the album comes out, or the fifth single. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's it's a, it's a lot more of a commercial Flume style track, uh, very similar or reminiscent of Say Nothing, uh, where it's meant to be more radio friendly. Um, if you think of like Escape had, was a little bit more, so Flume, it has a scale like this is super experimental and this is like poppy uh like i would say say nothing was here escape was probably here palaces was somewhere here as well sirens was here as well um and uh no escape was probably more middle-ish and this one is also very similar to to say nothing and, and more on this commercial side and uh of the singles uh i regret to say it's i feels like it's the most forgettable of all the singles um, that being said, I still like enjoyed the song. I, I really did. Uh, it just felt like I've, we've heard so many different things from, uh, say nothing to sirens, to escape to palaces. All four of them are flume in totally different aspects, totally different atmospheres, totally different styles while still being cohesive. Uh, and they just, they all provide a different, a, a something else to the album, uh, that will soon get, a, 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 yeah, a, just something that's, it's different, unique and creative. Um, and uh, maybe just because it sounds more like Say Nothing, uh, because it's more commercial friendly, has more of a basic structure and basic kind of uh, beat, drop, lyric, chorus to it than some of the other, his other tracks. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, I know a lot of people didn't love Say Nothing a ton. Uh, and uh, my guess is I would be in the minority of people that um, would like this over Hollow. Uh, I think that people would be like, oh, this is a better version of Say Nothing or something like that, just in terms of where his style is going. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Of the five of the five singles so far, I would say this is probably the most forgettable of them, uh, and it feels the most like a little. I don't say underwhelming, but just like a oh yeah, like this is a good song, but it's not. Uh, it's not. It does not blow me away like the first listens to say nothing, escape palaces, sirens. Like all those were just like oh my gosh, I finished and I was like my. My goodness, this is insane. Um, and this is just like a, yeah, it's a good track. Great flume. So uh, <laughs> that's a, that's such a good thing. That is a very high compliment. It sounds like I'm being very negative, but it's a very high compliment for the rest of his discography, the rest of the singles uh, for me to hear a song like this and and give, and say it's like a, or a seven out of 10 or an eight out of 10 song, but still be like, like feel like oh okay like it's that's like it's flume and so it's yeah the, <laughs> to show how good the rest of the tracks are is, is is something else but welcome back we are moving on to the 10th track this is love light okay another kind of weirdish one that feels a little out of place in the whole um no, it's not that out of place, but I don't know. I, I'm i just, I'm not as impressed with the non-singles than the singles so far from this project. So, uh, yeah, that one just, that one felt like a very, it felt like a, the most filler of anything on the project so far. Um, but uh, it, it still adds, it felt like it fit in well with the album. It, it fits the sound, it fits the tone, it fits the atmosphere. Uh, just It just felt like it was a little bit of a filler. So... Um, yeah, that, that one's just okay. That one's just okay for me, but, uh, we are moving into Sirens. So here is my original reaction. Wow. Sirens by Flume. Uh, whoo. Lock one on that track. Uh, first of all, I will say stylistically and thematically, it sounds like a mix between uh, his uh, self-titled Flume album and this is Flume mixtape. Um, it, it does, it really does feel like a good or high. This is Flume mixtape. Uh, it does feel like a, a good combination between the kind of old uh, what put Flume on the radar and the kind of just super gritty, uh, sharp. 
uh, piercing or at times uh, mixtape. And so it's a good blend of both. Um, and another thing I want to note right off the bat is that uh, I was, um, I don't want to say worried, uh, even though I really, really did like say nothing, uh, I was a little, I would say worried maybe, um, that uh, it was going to get a little too poppy. Uh, we were going to get a little too much pop in it and we weren't going to get um, enough um like this, we're going to get enough like weird, just out of left field kind of classic flume stuff. And we did. We definitely got that with this track for sure. Uh, and so that is a good thing. It is a good sign, a good sign of things to come, I would say for sure. Uh, I really didn't have a whole ton to say bad about this track. Uh, if anything, th that kind of really, really high pitch uh, piercing noise right before the drops uh, were like a little, a little too like that to me. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's kind of the thematics. That is a kind of a flume sound. That is a style that he goes for all the time. So, uh, I, I don't mind that. Um, I actually liked how the lyrics, uh, were pretty unintelligible. Um, I'm not sure. I did look them up, uh, middle of the song. Um, I, I'm not quite sure the, the meaning of it just on the first listen here. And, uh, I, did, I don't really want to do a deep dive into it at this point, but, uh, it, it does really give like a, um, both, uh, a kind of the high pitch sounds give like a, a siren, like an actual like woo, woo, woo siren sound, um, or just like the, the piercing noise of that, of like an ambulance driving by them, as well as the vocals here, uh, by Caroline giving the kind of, um, classic, uh, like, uh, ocean siren, like, uh, when you hear from, uh, Greek mythology of a siren that is like pretty much a mermaid that, um, kills that draws sailors in with their call their sound their song and then kills them and eats them and all that kind of stuff so and bringing it back we are here for go the second last the penultimate track here is go <laughs> to say about these last couple tracks, um, particularly the ones that w aren't the singles. Um, they, they fit in well with the, the track list. They're a great addition to the project, um, uh, but they're not like way out there. I feel like I don't have a, a ton uniquely to say about the tracks individually. Um, production is solid as they always are uh, on this one. It's a little more lighthearted, a little more of that uh, kind of... I don't even know what to call it, that that just the hit with say nothing it gives me a little bit of vibes uh, of that a little bit but um yeah that's uh that's that's all I have to say uh, let's head into the final track palaces and here is my initial reaction. Oh, that was like the as serene and um, like powerful as Flume gets. That was. That was something special. Uh, although, I, I kind of wanted to hear that after they hearing the whole album. I kind of feel like that would that would be a more, an even bigger first listen with that being the conclusion to the whole project rather than just as a single. But hey, that's great. That's really good. And I think that's going to hit even harder uh, at the end of the track list, at the end uh, being the finale to uh, the whole Palaces project. I think that's going to hit just harder. I think it's going to be it's going to be stronger. It's going to be man, and it's already great. Wow. I, like I don't even I'm I'm like tad speechless of just listen of just feeling like that was such a big like intimate moment for such a big project that it will be like the kind of the kind of resurgence of flume or i guess the next album of his in so long i <laughs> i don't know that was i just that makes me that makes you feel a certain way so okay since that was filmed um i have fallen hard for palaces it is by far my favorite song on the album and now that we've listened to everything i can say that with 100 percent certainty my favorite without a doubt i absolutely adore palaces i love songs that have just the the nice build and then just into just just it's not a whole ton it doesn't go insane the finale but it's just it's like a Oh, that's just, it's just peaceful at the end. And 
Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, I think I realized, too, in between um, takes is that uh, Damon Albarn is gorillas. Um, he's he's gorillas. I, I knew gorillas was one person. I just didn't realize uh, it was him specifically. But um, so that is the 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 music behind gorillas. Uh, so that is Damon Albarn. Uh, in the end, what is my, what are my thoughts on the album? My first thoughts, my initial thoughts on the whole thing, having listened to it fully through now. Um, slightly underwhelmed. And, and here's why. Uh, the first five releases, the singles, I think are the best five tracks, in my opinion. Um, and so when, maybe exception for Hollow, I think something else may get above Hollow, but I mean, it, it was it was just towards the end of the album life cycle, so it wasn't like, because there was a single that was released like, what, three days before the actual album came out, so. Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, the, the, I thought the singles were the best part of the project by far. Um, there were some things that felt like a little bit more of filler. Uh, Flume didn't go really too hard one way of being super experimental or gritty. Um, he was a little more reserved, I would say, with this project. Um, so I think it'll see a lot more commercial success than anything he's really done in the past. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a solid album. I really did enjoy it. Hear me. Like, I, I really enjoyed the album. I just was... I was expecting, and I shouldn't have been expecting that, uh, the rest of the, what, five tracks? Uh, seven? <laughs> bad, bad math there. Uh, what, eight? The other eight tracks were going to be a little more girthy, have a little bit more awe to them, which they didn't, and that's okay. Um, that was just me not right-sizing my expectations, but... Uh, yeah, so in the end, I enjoy the project. I uh, didn't enjoy it as much as I would have absolutely loved to in the end, but uh, still a solid uh, album from Flume, and uh, excited to see uh, if this album life cycle is going to last a little bit longer, if we're going to get some remixes to this, uh, maybe some companions, just like Skin Got. We'll see, but uh, companion EPs, but... Yeah. In the end, uh, I'd love to know what you guys think. What did you think of Palaces now that it is fully out, the whole album? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But other than that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.